Hello. I just wanted to make a quick video to introduce you to what is probably or what is definitely the biggest change that we've ever made in the history of the Khan Academy. We've introduced a new learning flow that tries to engage people more. We've heard from a lot of users that there's a lot of content on Khan Academy. They didn't know where to start. They didn't know what level was appropriate for them. And so we've, we've spent a lot of time thinking about this. And what you're about to see is our new learning flow. So I'm a new user, and it gives us a nice little welcome message. And I say, cool, let's explore. So when you log in, you'll see this mission, the world of math. And right now, as we launch, that is the only mission that we have. And it'll essentially walk through all of the math exercises that we have on Khan Academy. Over the next few months, you're going to see other missions, missions aligned to grade levels, missions aligned to preparing for a test, missions aligned to being able to do some type of a project. You'll also start to see missions in other subjects. Now these squares that you see, this is for those of you who are familiar with our knowledge map, you can kind of view it as a condensed knowledge map for the particular mission that you're thinking about. So here there are 482 boxes. Each of these represents a skill. It represents a type of math problem. So what we're going to start right now, and I highly recommend you do this as well, it's actually kind of fun, is we're going to start with a pretest. This is to address the issue of where do I start on Khan Academy? What are, what are the exercises that are most appropriate for me? So I'm going to actually take this pretest right now. So let's start the pretest. So if, you, if I see anything that is completely daunting to me, I should just say, I haven't learned this yet. What is the area of the rectangle? Well, that's just going to be 3 times 9, which is 27 square inches. Well, let's just say for the sake of argument, let's pretend that we're, we haven't learned algebra or geometry yet. So I haven't learned this yet. I haven't learned this yet. And this is an adaptive test here. If I answer questions right, it's going to get harder or go to more advanced topics. If I get questions wrong, it's going to give us simpler or more basic topics. Move the orange dot to 4 thirds. So 4 thirds, that's 1 third, 2 thirds, 3 thirds, and 4 thirds. Submit my answer. And I have to do five more problems. So this isn't too long of a thing here. So similar triangles. Well, I said I'm going to pretend like I haven't taken geometry yet. So I'm going to say I haven't learned this. Now they gave us a proportion. 9 over 2 is equal to what over 18? Well, we multiply the denominator by 9. So we have to multiply the numerator by 9. So it's going to be 9 times 9 is 81. And there we go. I've, I've done my pretest. And now the system is actually building a model for what I likely know and what I likely don't know. And we'll look at that in a second. So now you see that some of these tiles changed colors. Gray means that I haven't even practiced this thing yet, while blue means that I've shown that the, that the system thinks that I, I, I might know that at a reasonable level. And the deeper the, 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 the darkness of the blue, the better that I actually know that. So let's actually start looking at these. So you can see here, you can see here that e I can go on each of the concepts and it says I'm practiced for continue for for congruent segments. It says right here, need practice, or it hasn't started for points, lines, and planes. And if you click on any one of these, you can go directly to that exercise. So based on how I did the pretest, it immediately figured out what I probably know well, what I might not know uh, that well. And now this is key. Instead of having the old Khan Academy where you just had this huge knowledge map and you said, oh, I guess I'll work on something, one of these 500 things that I see in front of me, this now will recommend what the next best thing is for me. So let me see. So reading tables 2. So I can start working on that. The table below shows solar panel installations by state during the last fiscal year, except one entry is missing. So this entry is missing. And if I'm completely confused by this, I've never seen it, we have a video right here that should hopefully help explain that concept. Let me go over here. And it says for this one, I have to get five in a row. And if I get five in a row, I'm going to get to that practiced state. So I will, I will just continue touring. But I don't have to do exactly this one. This is what the system recommends the most as the next best thing. But then there's other things that it thinks should, I should also be working on right now. So say finding absolute values. What is the absolute value of negative 6.5? Well, that's 6.5. Likewise, we still have videos there. And I got one out of my five correct. And if you have a coach, or if you are someone's coach, the coach can also make their own recommendations. Obviously, we have a lot of coach tools so that a coach can keep track of what a student is working on. And then based on that, the coach can recommend particular 
exercises to be focused on or to be prioritized. Now, once you've spent some time on the system, your learning dashboard might look a little bit more like this. And to get closer and closer to mastery, to get deeper and deeper shades of blue there, not only do you need to practice it, get five in a row, and that sometimes might change depending on the exercise, but later on you need to show that you still know how to do that thing in a mix of many, many, many different types of problems. And the place that happens is right over here, which we call our mastery challenge. This is the thing, this is the, the tool that you want to use repeatedly in order to get those those squares as dark as possible. So let me take a mastery challenge. Negative seven minus three i. The absolute value of five. Well that's just five. This triangle is this triangle equilateral, isosceles, or scalene? So it is definitely isosceles. If it was equilateral, these would be 60 degrees. So it is isosceles. You have two common base angles. So you see it's going through all of the different types of the mathematics to make sure that not only have I remembered how to do these, not only have I retained the, the understanding of these concepts, but I also can do it in a mixed environment where I have to also recognize, hey, what is a tool I need to, I need to use right now? What are the factors of 18? So let's see, we could have one, we could have two, three. See, four is indivisible, five is indivisible, six is, nine is, and 18. And I could have used this little tool to help me with that, but if you know the factors, you can just type them in. So let's check our answer. Plot 10 comma six and select the quadrant in which the point lies. 10 comma six and sitting in the first quadrant. Move the orange dot to negative three minus two i. Negative three minus two i. And now I'm completing my mastery challenge and I'm going to get essentially a report for what, what did I achieve by completing this mastery challenge. And it's showing us the things that have gotten darker based on the fact that these are things that I had practiced in the past, but in, the, in, in this last eight problems, I showed that I still remembered them and I could do it in a, in a situation where I'm getting a whole mix of problems. And so it's our hope that you enjoy this as much as I just did, that this learning flow really makes sure that you know where to start, that you're starting on things that are at your level. And not only are you learning new things, but you have an opportunity to review those new things and you have an opportunity to make sure that you know when to use those things when, you, when you're faced with a whole mix of problems. So I look forward to seeing how you can Fill out your knowledge map here. Fill out all of these skills and, and fulfill your mission in the world of math and in the future other missions. And we really want to hear from you to figure out how we can make this entire experience better. So I encourage you to go down to the bottom of these pages and say, give feedback. And tell us what you think. Tell us what's working for you, what's not working for you. And if you have ideas for, for things that might make it even better, let us know.